Okay. Good morning, everybody. Uh, we had a. I managed to join the uh, two previous talks because it's uh, quarter to eight here. So I woke up at six thirty and joined the talks uh, for Dr. Benkers and Dr. Asakans. Uh, it's a pleasure to follow the, these two wonderful talks of female uh, sexual dysfunction and male sexual dysfunction premature ejaculation. Uh, essentially, sexual act is a physical, psychological, and interpersonal event between either two or more individuals. For the purposes of this talk, we will consider the sexual sex as an act between two adults and I will take it from there, who are couple. So talking about couple therapy, uh, before I jump into couple therapy, a little bit about myself and why I agreed to do this talk. So my main job is consultant psychiatrist in rehab psychiatry, when I deal with treatment resistance schizophrenia, but also I provide cognitive analytic therapy as a private practitioner. Uh, so that's the reason I accepted uh, and thought that maybe I'll be able to contribute a little bit to the, this fantastic conference uh, that we are hearing from a lot of experts actually from yesterday and today. Uh, so moving on to couple therapy, starting from the very basics, what is a couple? Couple are considered as two adults when they are together, when we consider them as together, it's couple. They are often married have a romantic relationship and they are in sexual relationship, at least for this conversation. Then what is a therapy or what is talking therapy? Talking therapy is the use of psychological methods as you can see on my slide, use of psychological methods. Uh, let me uh, change my view of the video so that I'll see the full slide. Uh, use of psychological methods during regular personal interactions, or we call them as psychotherapy sessions, with the clients to help them change behavior, increase well-being, and overcome problems. So that's essentially it's couple therapy. How is it uh, organized in the country I work in, in the United Kingdom? So health services, as you probably are aware, the National Health Service is publicly funded. Uh, that means it comes. It's state-funded uh, service. It's free at the point of delivery. Anything that is considered as health intervention is free for everyone. Psychological therapies are provided as part of the National Health Service. Uh, relationship counseling, on the other hand, is provided by Relate, which is a charity, and it's available for people across the country. And they, they focus on counseling couples, families, young people, individuals. They provide sex therapy uh, and mediation and training courses. So Relate is the organization that's available, as I said, for everyone. Uh, if you're married, you're living together, you're single, gay, bisexual, straight, or trans person. Unfortunately, I missed the morning uh, discussion between Dr. Shetty, Dr. Shukla, and Dr. Panchnadikar uh, because it was too early here, but I was really interested in that talk. So Relate is available for everyone. What do the relationship counseling do? The counselors provide a caring, a supportive, and non-judgmental environment. And each word there carries a, quite a significant meaning, uh, especially the non-judgmental one. And it the, the relationship counselor are truly non-judgmental and they provide uh, space for individuals to talk about their difficulties, irrespective of the individual's background, sexuality, marital status, sexual orientation, or gender. Counselor help to identify and clarify the issues in the relationship. Usually it's about six to 12 sessions and generally the goals are agreed and that's what the focus are, uh, focus is kept in relationship counseling. As we heard in many times, it's not a magic solution and it requires commitment, engagement and hard work. Uh, quite often people find that there is an improvement in relationship after relationship counseling. And sometimes it may lead to separation and people moving on and living away from each other or uh, uh, divorce or separation. 
And that doesn't mean that the counseling is unsuccessful. That means that that is the outcome of that relationship counseling. Now, we heard uh, quite a lot of biological aspects of uh, sexual act in the, in the, since yesterday and today. This, this, my talk is mainly on the psychological aspect. Uh, so what's the difference between, difference between the relationship counseling and couples therapy? Uh, I would focus first on the, the bottom point. Often they are considered synonymous to, with each other. However, those who provide couples therapy like me, we, I like to believe there is a difference. Relationship counseling is quite often six to 12 sessions. Couples therapy can be a lot more than that. And the main difference is uh, therapy may, couples therapy may follow a specific model of psychological therapy or combination of different models of psychological therapy. And counseling follows counseling skills as I have uh, briefly mentioned in the previous slide. In other words, relationship counseling will tell you what needs to be done to improve the relationship. It will also tell you how to improve the relationship. What it may not look at is what if whatever is in offer or whatever needs to be done if the individual or a couple is not able to do it. And psychological therapy or the couple's therapy looks at if they are unable to do it, then what to do. So it's slightly uh, diving in a little bit deep to find out why individuals are not able to do it. And as we come a little bit further, I will explain what I mean by that. So starting on a positive note, how do happy relationships looks like? How, how does, and, and in, for this talk, I will uh, focus on traditional uh, in terms of numbers, the majority of heterosexual married couples most of the times. Uh, that, is the, that is the large number of uh, population at the moment. So happy relationships are affective and, uh, sorry, affectionate, and there, there is a friendship between the relationship. The couple is able to resolve disagreements by discussions. There may be disagreements, but they are able to talk, talk to each other and resolve these disagreements. Generally speaking, within the relationship, the positive sentiments override. And I think that is quite important that maybe there will be disagreements, maybe there will be uh, times when you don't get along, but generally speaking, positive sentiments override in the relationship. In interactions, the compliments are more than criticisms. And there may be conflicting views about value principles and that itself is not a problem as long as you are able to maintain the first four aspects. So you may have conflicting views say about politics or about food choices or about uh, various aspects of life. But if you're, if fundamentally, if there is an affectionate relation, fundamentally, if it's affectionate and relationship and the friendship is there, if you are able to resolve the disagreement and generally speaking, you're complementary to each other, then the conflicting views, they don't impact the relationship as much. What are the challenges? And generally, again, the relate uh, reports that the challenges in relationship comes from these issues, where the expectations from the future will be different. They may have communication issues, ability to talk to each other. People may have different uh, areas of spending or different interest in terms of how money should be managed. Uh, simple examples like, uh, one individual may, one partner may believe that there needs to be more investment in future. The other partner may believe there may there needs to be more enjoyment in the life experiences. All these aspects matter. And these are the challenges where uh, the relationship may go through the rocky phase. Intimacy, sex, and having a family wanting to have children at what point, how many children, everything can be a challenge if there are significant disagreement. And then when there are disagreements and the uh, argument happens, the ability to manage argument, and it's not necessarily resolve the argument, but manage argument is, is important. 
there are problems around extended families we we all know it very well and this could be there could be variety of problems in terms of extended families uh, divided loyalties are you are you going to stand by your partner or part your are you going to create your own values and the partner is going to compromise their value belief system are you going to follow the value belief system that comes from the family and these are the points of friction when there is a significant clash in in such aspects uh, if, if there was a time, I would have given an example about how uh, these conflicts would be, but I'm sure from your personal experiences, you will be able to relate to all these issues. And I will keep coming back to your personal experiences because any anything that is psychological, we can all relate to it. So how does a relate, what sort of strategies relate uses or relationship counselors use? Uh, and the key point is the ability or the training of talking it over uh, with the couple. So the couple are given an opportunity to talk it over. They are taught the skills how to talk it over and they're given a space. And sometimes even the role play is done when there is a significant issue where they disagree. And within the session, the relationship counselor may encourage the couple to talk, uh, talk about the issue. And, and the, uh, the principles are these. So first, if you are going to discuss something difficult, you have to keep tab on your physical feelings. So you may feel quite anxious, you may feel angry, and you need to be aware of that and not act on the physical feelings. Choose an appropriate time, time to talk. That means you will not be disturbed. There will be space to sit down to talk. And there are no other commitments that are going to disturb if it's something important. Try to start the discussion amicably and, and don't sort of go with all firing guns and you did this and you did that. It, it needs to start more with the fundamental feeling that you're sitting there to sort out the argument and not to blame and find the uh, find the partner is at fault or prove that the partner is at fault. So start the uh, discussion amicably. Uh, general techniques, which can be quite effective, such as starting the statement using I rather than you, in terms of you don't listen to me, is, is, is not perceived as a very amicable statement as against, when I speak to you, I feel as if I'm not heard takes away the responsibility from the, the person doesn't feel as if they are under criticism. Our relationship counselors will encourage partners to see from the, their partner's perspective. In other words, you can teach empathy by asking people to uh, put themselves in the partner's shoes and encourage them to think how it must be from their point of view. The partners, the argument, it, it is very well uh, established that argument about money, or argument about what movie to watch, what television program to watch, they may be very uh, surface problems. They may be something more important and deeper going on. And the space and non-judgmental discussions and appropriate conversation allow people to scratch those surfaces with each other and uh, and, and, and dive deep into the any underlying issues. Plus, on from both sides, a relationship counselor offers them the opportunity that how much will they be willing to compromise in order to improve the relationship, not necessarily save the relationship, but improve the relationship. So these are the aspects, talking it over and implementing these aspects. And they are, it has been proved by evidence that these if you follow these steps, it does work well. What, what comes in the way, and uh, Gottman, who introduced these concepts, called them as the four horsemen of apocalypse, a uh, very Western concept, but I, or, or very uh, Christian concept, and I will keep it to the Indian context. So the, the, the psychology remains same. These are the four, uh, uh, four patterns of behavior, I would say, would stop you from having effective communication. And I will give example of each one. And I'm sure 
uh, I hope that uh, they, they at least some of the aspects and example I'll give you will be able to relate. Uh, it's, it's a say start with criticism. When there is a criticism, sim simple thing like you had gone out to buy sabji. You took a half an hour. You always do this. You don't, you, you never think of anyone else. You're selfish and, and you don't think of me. Now that is, that is received in a very, very aggressive manner. Instead of that, the, if the if the communication is, I was quite worried and upset that you were late and you took more than half an hour to come back because I was quite scared that I will fail to keep the food ready when the guests arrive and that will reflect on us as a couple badly. And I was worried about it that the last time also I was late in cooking. So this time I had added burden. Uh, I was also worried about that you were late for half an hour if everything was okay. And the same event when approaching two different manners, the awareness of what you are actually scared about, why we are, you are upset that the partner was half an hour late when you expected them to be back in 10 minutes and they were, they were half an hour late. And that at that point, partner is able to open the dialogue and able to say what happened as a dancing, you are always like this and you never listen to me, which is a generalization, which is a criticism. The, and that would stop communication. The contempt is even slightly more than the criticism. Criticism is attack on character as against contempt is taking a more position of moral superiority in a relationship. Uh, and we, we quite often see this. So for, for example, contempt comes from Contempt is seen with body language, with ridicule, sarcasm, uh, quite often seen in marital, heterosexual marital relationships or even uh, same sex marital relationship, uh, ridiculing the value principles of in-laws or the, or the family they grew in when there is a, there is a distinct uh, disagreement. For example, I will give you a contextual example if, if uh, if two if two people marry each other and one individual is comes from a supporting one political party, say one is a Congress supporter, other is a BJP supporter. As I said, fundamentally having different uh, belief system is not a problem, but having a contempt because the fact that you believe in some uh, in in BJP, therefore the person supports Congress is going to criticize and contempt the partner that can start a quite a slippery path and, and the other person will have to just shut down and whoever is more critical or more, more contemptuous will take the position of moral superiority. And, and there are many such examples uh, in terms of value belief system starting from religion, politics, music, uh, support of the Bollywood actors or actresses, uh, food choices, which school should, should child go to? Should they be in Marathi medium? Should they be in English medium? And there are a number and number of issues where if you talk it over and come to the agreement, the outcome can be different. But if you're contemptuous to the other, to your partner, the, outcome, uh, the, the, the journey can start where the relationship will start deteriorating. Defensiveness, the third uh, area of maladaptive behavior is a reaction to criticism. T take an example when 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 you come home when both of you come home uh, from work and the partner ask udya joshan kade jevayla bolavla hota ta joshan na tu phone karun sangnar hota ki we can't come and the reaction immediately is you know how busy i was i had so many meetings and you always do this you uh, you point out if i forget something and um, and becoming extremely defensive and pointing out uh, partner's fault. And uh, even if you have forgotten, trying to show it as if somehow they are at fault that they are pointing out. And the simple change the relationship counselor would say, if you were to respond, oh, I'm sorry, I forgot, I should have called them. 
and it will be inconvenient for them to call so late, but let's call them now and tell them that we are unable to come. And I am really sorry that I, I forgot doing this. The partner who started pointing out that you haven't called may not have started on the critical position, but may have started uh, stating that this needs to be done. The, so that's, that's again, something that happens fam in family quite commonly, and we need to keep, keep a tab on that. Stonewalling is on the other hand, completely shutting down and not sort of engaging, or in other words, talk to the hand approach. Uh, if, if the partner is, if you are upset with the partner, then stopping the communication and doing things that as if nothing has happened. So sort of carrying on without communicating, but carrying on cleaning, carrying on uh, doing your daily chores and no matter what the partner is trying to discuss with you, you continuing on what you want to do, making phone calls, sitting on the laptop, looking at the mobile phone, um, cooking or tidying up. All, all those are the examples of stonewalling without communicating, just carrying on doing whatever you're doing. And that can brood a lot of difficulties in the relationship. Uh, Gottman, so therefore introduced something called a safe house. Safe house means these are, these are the uh, difficulties one can experience. So how to combat these difficulties in terms of by building the safe house. And in my next slide, I have broken down these, uh, these points of safe house. So in order to create safe house, Gottman suggested that you have to build, he used the term as you have to build love maps. And what, what that means is trying to understand the psychological workings of your partner or trying to understand how the partner thinks and what would be, what would be the context of the, the way they think. So understanding their upbringing, their values, their culture, uh, why they think the way they think. And that can allow you to improve your empathy or that allows you to think more, that allows you to understand where they are coming from. Uh, share fondness and admiration. The, 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 this is particularly an antidote to contempt. The, the fondness, it focuses on the affection and the respect within the relationship using actually using the phrases in terms of expressing the appreciation if you like and it, it's very difficult for especially generalizing here a little bit at least when i left india i never claimed that i understand india but when i left india back in 1998 i used to find this in the in my sort of cousins who were married etc it was very difficult for them to show compliments and to actually admire and say positive things about their particularly female partners and for women it was difficult to do the same thing when it was when they were in public i of course i didn't have uh, that time access to what happens in the private space turning towards the person rather than turning away what that means it uh, if, whenever there's an event and and, and you respond you resp the, the, the moments you respond, we actually go towards the, each other and try to build blocks to build the relationship. So instead of moving away from the relationship, doesn't matter how difficult it is to trying to talk to each other and, and build this relationship. Having a positive perspective in, uh, in problem solving approach, problems will be there. They're always there irrespective of your socioeconomic cultural background. There will be problems at different levels, but turning towards each other to solve the problems would, would be a good aspect. Uh, managing conflicts. Uh, again, as, as I said before, the, the uh, focus is on managing rather than resolving conflicts, focusing as the uh, in the previous point, focusing on the positive aspect of the uh, conflicts and, and sometimes it helps, sometimes comparison helps, but sometimes it doesn't. Uh, and, and whichever is appropriate, you use that right strategy. Uh, making a life dream comes true. What this means is both partners trying to understand that what would be each other's dream 
and people this doesn't naturally come to individuals when they are in relationship uh, quite often individuals tend to focus on their own dreams and you may have to be taught to think about partners have their own life and they may have their own dreams and as a couple you are quite often the, the therapist or the counselor will encourage that the the client is not individual, but their client as a couple, and then thinking about each other's dream and how to meet those dreams. Creating shared meaning. When you grow up in a family, you may have a shared meaning with your family, but when you're married or with you, when you're with a partner, then you need to create shared meaning for yourself. I, I, I don't know if it's the most appropriate place to say this, but I quite often think about uh, the beautiful line from Bahina Bai Chaudhary's poem, Lekicha uh, Mahera Sati Maya Sasari Nandate. And if, if you think the shared meaning that was there uh, will always be continued and it's no reflection on the, that this is the only women's issue. It, it, it should come from both sides really. But the shared meaning is, is created in each family and it changes. Uh, understanding that whatever your value principles may have when you are growing up may change and uh, having that compromise will lead to the last two points, which is trust and commitment. Trust comes from the, the fundamental basic principle that in this relationship, we are going to look after each other and my partner will have my back and will always be there for me. Building that trust comes from putting in place all these uh, aspects that are already discussed. And commitment essentially is what we, in every culture, we have the vows that uh, uh, for better or for worse, we will be together for the rest of our life. And having that at, at your heart, Will allow, will allow people to focus on positives and, and will allow you to, even if you compare, will allow you to compare your partner with others and come to the focus on their positive aspect that even if I compare it with others, uh, my partner stands by me in this, 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 this aspect and minimizing essentially the negative if there are any. So that's how you create the, uh, safe house. Now, this was about the relationship counseling. Where do I come in picture? Where I come in picture is the, in these love maps uh, where understanding, when Gottman says, build your love maps and understand your partner's inner psychological world, history, worries, stresses, joys, hopes. The theory of what needs to be done is there, the theory of how it needs to be done there, but what if we are unable to do it? And that's, that's the point where psychological therapist comes in picture. Uh, and I use the model of cognitive analytic therapy. So I'll give a little bit of a background of cognitive analytic therapy. The next few minutes, it may sound a little bit technical. I will try to uh, make it as simple as possible. Uh, I'm keeping an eye on the clock, uh, but please do remind me if I start going over time. Uh, so essentially, CAT allows you to kind of a develop a third eye that would allow you to see yourself in, in, in almost develops you in sight and helps you understand why do you do what you do? How do you feel the way you feel? And why do you think in a certain way? And does it work for you? And if it doesn't, does it need to be Need to change. If it does, we don't need to change it. But if it doesn't, then do we need to change? So a little bit of a th theoretical background here. Uh, cat theory suggests that quite often we stop our life being more fulfilled by doing the things that we were doing when we were younger. And it's not because it's wrong or, it's, or we don't know anything else, but because it works. It works and it has always worked. That's why we tend to do the same thing again and again and again. Simple thing like I, I study for the examination just before the exam to increase my grades. It works. And then we don't recognize uh, when they stop working, we don't know anything else. But we don't have to keep doing it. For example, 
preparing for the exam in the last month or so may have worked for you till say even 11th standard, but from 12th standard onwards or from in medical school, it may not have worked. And then you needed to change it in order to keep the grades. So by changing, and, and the last point is by changing our behavior, not only we can learn to manage our own behavior, but we can influence other people's behavior towards us. So the, the great example, I'll come to the grades example further a bit. Uh, let's focus on the, let's go on, on a, a little bit psychological here to understand the theory. I've already explained the difference between the relationship counseling and couples therapy. And the red point here is where the cat comes in picture. Uh, so here is the picture where mom is feeding her child. A very simple act. All Quite a few would have witnessed it. Quite, quite a few would have done it. Quite a few would have done, seen it in your partners. And you may have also seen that then here mom feeds the child and then the child is feeding the doll. Uh, quite a simple occurrence that happens in uh, our daily life, you may have seen in nieces and nephews. The cat theory suggests that the experience in the first picture, the experience of being looked after or being loved, the child is going through the experience of being fed, being looked after, being loved by mother is making various noises and being very affectionate and uh, loving the child. And the theory is the child is not only experiencing how to be loved, but child internalizes the entire experience of being loved and loving. So the child is experiencing how it feels to be in the loving role as well, not just the loved role. So the child is internalizing mom's emotions as well as their own emotions. And when they enact the same experience with the doll, it is not repeat. It is not just repetition or mimicry of the behavior, but it is enactment of the full experience. And now, child is in the mother's role as loving, and the doll is loved. Essentially, what these are the loving to loved. We call them as reciprocal roles. So, in the first diagram here, the top role is others, where it's mother the child is self, and we looked at the loving to loved. That's the loved child having repetitive experience of being loved and uh, be, be repetitive experiences of internalizing the loving role, then learns to love themselves and learns to respect themselves and look after themselves, which becomes self to self, also internalizes the experience. And when they are an adult, they now, as they are growing and becoming an adult, they now have the ability to be in a loving role as well as to be in the loved role, which will be self to others. So this is the child now going to have the ability to love others and look after others and so to speak, feed others because they have gone through all those uh, experiences of internalization. That is, that is the experience and the self, according to cat theory, the self is made of internalization of such various reciprocal roles that arise from everything that's around us when we are growing up. And this could be your nuclear family, your parents, adults around, the wider family, grandparents, uncle, aunts, uh, family, friends, the religious elders, we internalize this every time when we go and stand in the temple or a mosque, you, we feel peace because there is a reciprocal role of, uh, again, the, 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 I don't know what the reciprocal role with God would be, but again, probably uh, looked after or respecting to respected, uh, I respect God and then in, in return, I will get the same respect that I respect God, the wider world, the community, nursery, school teachers, the, the, you remember one school teachers and one significant event and you internalize it and, and that mistake never happens again. It's not just the fear, it's the internalized experience because when we grow an adult, we take bit, bit of small bits from everywhere, largely from our parents. And then what becomes self 
is the combination of all this from the from the, the 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 cat theories from the relationship with others we we become ourselves that's what the vygotsky the russian psychologist said so very briefly again i'm going to go through emphasizing the same point so that uh, you understand if it was face to face uh, conference i would have really loved to have some questions at this point to see if uh, the concept is clear so the cat model i i talked about the loving to loved role and these are the other roles so some a positive role nurturing caring uh, attentive protecting loving respecting to respected i mentioned equally there are other roles such as criticizing to criticized uh, abusing to abused threatening to scared and it's not that these are not there they, these uh, these uh, rules are there in our lives but the reciprocal roles that are very prominent would define if there is any significant aspect to our personality or our big upbringing might affect us and i'll go back to the example of the grades i talked about and because i am talking to all the medics it is very uh, appropriate to assume that people are high achievers and the perfectly caring to perfectly cared for role was prominent that means when we inadvertently nobody did this when we scored good grades when we were young we were praised affection was shown we were admired and then we did uh, start working on okay if i get more grades or if i do what i am supposed to do properly i the admiration comes my way and it's a, it's a very nice feelings and that's how the our self is developed that if we are given a responsibility i don't believe any doctors goes to the hospital because somebody because boss is going to check what time you came we go there because now the internalized self is such that when we look after our patients we feel good when we do that surgery well we feel good when our patient who was going to kill themselves improves and no longer feels suicidal we feel good that self is now almost like a external self telling us and keeping us going that is self to self but in advertently do we expect the same kind of behavior from others then do we put pressure on others so that they start striving and they start trying to meet our high standards or i'm saying our because i'm speaking to doctors if i was speaking to other group i would have said the same thing because here i'm discussing perfectly caring to perfectly cared for group and then that leads to the certain areas of uh, difficulties three concepts very quickly i will go through so what happens when we end up uh, when when the reciprocal roles sorry just to finish the conversation about perfectly caring to perfectly cared for uh, the patient i was working uh, in the relationship theory this role is significant so just put it in your mind park it for the time being and i will come back to it please uh, moving on to slightly different topic when the repetitive patterns are established that the certain certain ways we feel think and act are divided into cat, cat into three categories i'll just mention them as uh, concepts but they are not relevant for this talk so traps are essentially negative beliefs that generate behavior which enforces the belief for example if i if i say something i'll end up hurting people and if i don't express my own feelings or needs which results in i'm being ignored which makes me feel angry but it feels childish and angry and so i believe it's wrong uh, for me to be angry and aggressive think about a think about a sort of a traditional uh, traditional indian family where a girl is brought up by quite quite a well educated but girl is brought up with being so called a good girl and you don't necessarily back answer or you don't necessarily uh, demand things but you work with people 
so that things will work. And then such girl goes and marries into the family where it is not inherent in that family to, to understand uh, that they need to look after when the girl comes as a daughter-in-law. Now, this, if you think from that girl's point of view, she is not going to voice her opinion because that would reflect on her, reflect badly on her, would reflect badly on whatever she believes is right in her parents' home. And then she may be trapped into this cycle where the anger and frustration will build because you can't voice the needs and your needs are ignored and that will affect the relationship. Similarly, there, are, there is dilemma and there are snags, but I'm going to move away from dilemmas and snags purely because of the time. And I would like to give a real life example of what happened in the therapy. Uh, another example of the criticizing to criticize role, the similar example, even when in a, uh, in a relationship, uh, when you feel criticized, there is a rageful or angry frustration and, and the belief that if I keep quiet, things will improve if you don't talk, talk to uh, through it. And not engaging or voicing one's opinion means silent disapproval, stonewalling, but that further leads to being criticized or you end up becoming, becoming someone who criticizes the other person just, just by uh, being quiet and showing disapproval. So this is this diagram I put in. If you think about various patterns of behavior, be, making a full diagram of the person, the pers it helps the person to develop that third eye that I was talking about, to understand how their own mind works. And then it allows them to recognize that it happens and the recognition itself is a big step, which then allows you to change towards your partner and other in other relationships as well. So this is the example of uh, an individual uh, I did a cognitive analytic therapy with and there, uh, so although it was not a couple therapy, it was with the individual, uh, their rela his, his relationship with his partner improved significantly. Uh, and then later I had a sort of, there was already improvement in the relationship and then they came together to see me as a couple. So he was brought up with the values that I must be organized. I must plan well ahead to avoid last minute difficulties. There must be financial stability and ability to manage finances were extremely important. These were the values that he was brought up with. I must hold same values and practice same strategies as an adult as I did when I was younger. That was an assumed belief. That wasn't an explicit belief. Explicit beliefs were I have to be organized, intelligent, and confident. But what? where does that lead to then? Uh, essentially, in order to avoid things going wrong. So this is now these diagrams are going to look complicated. So I will read them for you from the top box. Let's move to the left. To achieve this, I must keep things under control. So the rule is controlling to control. Uh, if I don't, I worry that it will all go wrong and I will let them down. Here them is parents, but now it has become them himself. So the rule, when you do this is admiring to admire and perfectly caring to perfectly cared for. Uh, because this is the way I have always done. Then it goes to that if I let them down, the fear was then they will not, uh, they will alienate me. The fear was quite right that he was often threatened that if he doesn't tidy up his room, he will be asked to leave the house. It was quite strong as, as a child. If he doesn't uh, tidy up or if he doesn't do well in his exam, he will not be taken with the family for a meal. So he will be left behind and rest of the people will go to restaurant. And these feelings formed self to self voice that I have to be perfect. If not, all is going to all is all is going to end. It wasn't that in anything small will go wrong. So the the underlying fear is shown in the diagram of egg in the bottom half. So the top half is he had to stay in the top half because if you move anything little bit 
if you drop your guards, you are likely to be in the bottom half. So it was either or. So essentially there were conditions. If you do this, then you will get whatever you're waiting for. So conditional approval. The outcome was I'm never truly relaxed, worry free. This is I'm reading the right hand bottom box now. So the outcome was I'm never truly really relaxed, worry free or unconcerned. And I do not know how to enjoy because it was a constant battle of trying to be perfect in everything that he did. Uh, and otherwise it was all down the drain. And inadvertently he hadn't recognized that he expects the same thing from others, i.e. he used to expect the same standard from his partner. And that has actually affected the relationship quite significantly. So we, when he developed this under, developed understanding of his map, it became, uh, the relationship started improving because he started recognizing that he does it not, not only to himself, but also to the partner. For example, when he came back from office and if there was little bit untidy bed, then he would literally lose it. If there was anything that wasn't perfect, he would he would get very upset. Not necessarily angry, but quite upset and withdrew. So as I said, that that development of the map help, helps people to understand their own mind, but it also understand then their partner's mind, which is which brings me back to where the relationship counsel we left with the relationship counseling. And then it likely to improve the communication between partner. It improves the trust and commitment with each other. And it also recognizes, uh, it may also end in recognizing that the particular relationship may not have future. And whichever it is, uh, if you remember the, the, the previous side, the goal is, uh, goal of the psychological therapy is to improve the well being for the individual or uh, as, as a client. These, so bringing this back to the sexy con or, or to crack a joke when Dr. Nagapurkar sent me, I, I was really pleased that he was calling me sex icon, but then I thought, let's not go there. Uh, some of the partner factors that can affect the sexual relationship are resentment and anger, constant hostility, excessive politeness, lack of trust, cultural factors, unequal relationship, and recent, recent affair. Now, this is taken from the couple relationship problems and sexual dysfunctions from an article that was published in Advances uh, in back in 2012. These are not all the factors, but these are the factors that are related to the psychological functioning of the person. And when you undergo psychological therapy as a couple, these are the factors that get addressed, which in turn, improves the intimate relationship, the sexual relationship. In this talk, as I said, I've covered the psychological factors and uh, the physical aspects of the sexual were covered by other uh, presenters. So as I put it here in bold, sex is a physical, psychological, interpersonal event. As I said, between two or more people, for this talk, I'm focused on two adults who are in relationship, i.e. couple, and the treatment of sexual problems should take account of all three aspects. Couples relationship problems that can affect se sexual interaction include pervasive hostility, poor communication, lack of trust, and disparate levels of sexual desire. The levels of sexual desire, I haven't covered this in talk, but it has been extensively covered in other talks. And as I mentioned, the biological aspects were very well dealt by my pre two previous speakers. So I think I am coming to end of the talk and I will stop there. Any questions? I'll hand over to the organizers. So it was a wonderful session. So nicely explained the basics, basic reasons of conflicts between the couples and how it can be avoided or managed with very useful day-to-day -day, uh, examples, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, we will be moving to our next speaker. So mm -hmm. today we are with us, uh, Vikas Naik. 
he is professional graduate in computer science in addition to that he is also specialized in system analysis he also has uh, it project management uh, project management and software engineering degree from iit bombay that's so great of you sir at present working as seasoned cyber security professional with proven records of accomplishment in various sectors ranging from government organizations private and public sectors uh today he is going to speak on cyber crime and sexual abuse i think uh, dr rajendra kulkarni sir has raised the hand whether he is having some question yes uh th th thank you manisha for uh, recognizing my hand i uh, hello yes, rajesh are you there yes i can hear you yes uh, it was an excellent presentation and it was a pleasure listening to you uh, after so long on an academic forum uh, what i would like to uh, you to throw light on because in our culture i know you are very much uh, bound to here in indian culture and marathi culture also so uh, initially in the marital life they say ki are he lagna ta sa suruvatila vaad hota asa hota tasa hota so what i want you to throw light on that you can can you uh... Uh, rajendra you are on mute you advertently put yourself on mute सॉरी आय डोंट हियर द हॅंग झालं होतं ऐकाल नाही आला आणि तुमचं म्यूट आहे माइक राजेंद्र यू म्यूटेड युअरसेल्फ हॅलो यस यू म्यूटेड युअरसेल्फ आय डोंट हियर द क्वेश्चन हॅलो यस वी कॅन हियर यू राजेंद्र बट वी डोंट हियर द क्वेश्चन Uh, the my question is you have explained very nicely about the cat there is uh, a how to approach and how to improve relationship what i want you to throw light on on what are the early signs of a troubled relationship or a potentially troubled relationship because here in india as you know the the therapist or a psychiatrist is concerned very late in the picture it's the, come very late in the picture so can you throw some light on early signs of a troubled relationship or a potentially troubled relationship over to you rajesh thank you uh thank you for the question rajendra it, it is a very intense question and i will as you are absolutely right although i i will not claim that i have expertise in the indian culture anymore uh in the early relationship if there is anything that leads to physical violence if there is any abuse is seen then that probably is is quite significant i would take it with it very seriously if there is a physical violence constant criticism the four again i mean western culture what we call as four horsemen of the apocalypse criticism contempt defensiveness and stonewalling if all of them are present constantly then that would be quite quite uh, it would be very difficult to change all of them what i mean by that is sagya sagya badal jar tika asel ka hit changla nahi hai partner madhe ki ma ya partner badal majha kadhi jamuch shaknar nahi ki karan ti ashi tahe ki ma to asa cha hai ki ta cha badal एकही काही असं नसली ज्याच्यावर यू विल बी एबल टू बिल्ड ब्लॉक्स इफ देर आर नो पॉझिटिव देन दॅट वुड बी क्वाईट अ वरिंग फेस देन इट शिफ्टिंग समथिंग फ्रॉम देअर टू स्टार्ट टू टू हॅव अ लाईफ लॉंग ट्रस्ट अँड कमिटमेंट इज गोइंग टू बी अ व्हेरी लॉंग जर्नी अँड आय वुड वरी ॲट दॅट स्टेज क्वाईट ऑफन वेन यू सेट दॅट पीपल कॉल सायकॅट्रिस्ट लेट इफ देर आज अ बायोलॉजिकल बेसिस टू इन इन द कॉन्टेक्स्ट ऑफ सेक्शुअल डिस्फंक्शन if there is a biological basis that can be treated but if there is a psychological 
damage from the very beginning that is very difficult to treat. So I would just focus on those four areas. If there is nothing positive, if there is constant criticism, the person, the partner is not able to see anything positive in each other. If they are not able to uh, build any trust because relationship can be salvaged even after affair or affairs, if there is a positive, if there is seen in positive aspects are focused on, if there is a constant contempt about the other side, including not just the partner, but the partner's entire family, if there is a constant contempt, then that would be brooding ground. And what you're then looking for is a kind of, for a strong word, it kind of a, a abusive relationship for a very long time, because unless then one person is completely compromised and unhappy, uh, being remaining married doesn't mean being in a happy relationship. So yeah, those will be the factors that I would say. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Uh... Dr. Abhijit, do you have any question? Please increase the volume of your mic. Hello, am I audible now? Your voice volume is very low. Okay, I'll just type in the question and maybe that can ask me. That is better. You type. can ask, we are audible, you are audible, but the volume is very low. Okay, I'll, I'll try that. Uh, we are talking about relationships here. So just wanted to know how this concept of open marriages sometimes being practiced in affluent uh, families or affluent couples, uh, how can that have uh, effect on the sexual life? Thank you. Again, very interesting question. Uh, open it It's... It is, a, it is a very good question. And a, the one thing I would probably comment, and, and I, I'm sorry, Abhijit, to say this, not necessarily the affluent, uh, uh, the issue related to only affluent society, open marriages have been around for a very long time, probably have been around in, in, in Indian context as well. And it then it uh, you need to look at what what is the reason for the open marriages and where do both partners or three partners sit with each other in terms of are these the, if there is a trust, uh, if there is, if, if again, if there is a trust and commitment with each other, then by itself is not a problem. Uh, it, it may be culturally appropriate, inappropriate, but if you go into the traditional history there where I, I won't quote the examples from the religious text, but there were open marriages in the past as well. Uh, so open marriages by itself is not a problem if I understand your question correctly. Uh, open marriages will be a problem if one of the partner is not happy and then it will be like any other any other situation where there is an affair, extramarital affair or, or without the consent. I hope that answers your question. I hope I understood your question correctly. Yes, I think it's clear. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, 